speak in okay. questions from section 16 on transformations of uh, sine and cosine functions Problem 100, I'll do that too. Yes, let, let's do, uh, you will see problem 100 is same as, pretty much same as what we are doing right now. And when you say problem 100, everybody thinks in class, oh, we are solving a problem that's very hard. It's really, it's just problem 100. It's no difference between 100 and 19. So problem 19 says y is equal to 2 cosine of uh, 1 half x minus pi over 2 question is uh, determine the amplitude yeah already done that yeah this number is the amplitude is that right uh, next one determine the period you said uh, let's write the general case a cosine of bx minus c plus d uh, our amplitude was A, that's a factor by which the picture gets to be stretched vertically or horizontally, but the distance of high point from the midline is A. In general, you have to take an absolute value, amplitude is always reported as a positive number. Period of this function, sine and cosine by themselves had a period of 2 pi, or 360 degrees. Tangent and cotangent were 180 degrees, you remember that? Now, if you multiply your x by a number, function is going to exhaust its values faster. Like if, b is, if b is 2, function is going to run twice as fast. If b is a half, function is going to slow down. You go kind of up and down in a much slower fashion. Period turns out to be 2 pi over b, or over absolute values. All of these things need an absolute value on them. So in this case, 2 pi over one half what is that four pi what does that mean it means the influence of this one half is that instead of your graph taking uh, this long to repeat itself it's gonna and it's not the graph of the whole thing just a graph of influence of one half x uh, instead of hitting at pi over two you're gonna hit down at pi instead of low point being at pi, the low point is going to be at 2 pi. Instead of the next turning point to be, the uh, next uh, crossing point being at uh, 3 pi over 2, next crossing point is going to be at 3 pi. Instead of the next high being at 2 pi, the next high is going to be at 4 pi. So this is a cosine of one half x as opposed to just this cosine of x itself. So the influence of b is as you saw if b is less than one the picture gets stretched horizontal direction. If b is larger than one it's like a spring that you are compressing so you see more ups and downs in the same interval you saw before. If B were negative, we had to do a flip across the vertical axis. You remember for the cosine case, if you flip, nothing changes. So you have uh, same picture as before. Anyway, that is the issue of period. Next one, uh, phase shift. Phase shift is C over B. So you have to factor the B here to see phase shift clearly. In our case, <coughs> remember, this number has to be written as subtracted from X. So perhaps you have to force it to look like that. In this case, it is subtracted. So I take this number C, which is pi over 2, uh, divided by 1 half. You have to be very careful with your signs here. Uh, it could easily could go wrong. So what's our phase shift now? Pi. The way we are handling this thing, if this phase shift turned out to be positive, you move right, that is, after you 
stretch this thing or compress it. You move right, so uh, <coughs> what does that mean? If I was going to do cosine of 1 half x minus pi over 2, I take this red picture and move it so that it's uh, maximum. The starting point, I bring it here. Move it to the right by, by pi. So the picture is going to go uh, start from here and go down. So the cosine of 1 half x minus pi over 2, uh, that's going to behave like that. Next uh, issue, well, these are all there is to it, but uh, remember we had also another issue of a midline. What's the midline of this kind of a function? That is, how much of a vertical shift do we need to do? midline is going to be at D. Uh, that is how much you take the picture and shift it up or down. In this case, what is our D? Our D is zero. Nothing is added or subtracted. It means the midline is at Y equal to zero, which is just the X axis. You're not going up, neither are you going down. What is the order in which we perform this operation? As far as the problem is concerned, we are all finished with this issue. <clears throat> so, the order of transformation that you have to do, that is an important issue. <clears throat> the stretching or shrinking that you do <clears throat> have to happen first, then the shifting is going to happen second. So you stretch the function horizontally or vertically as it needs be. Then after you are done, you move it to the right or left according to the numbers that you have. Remember that. Uh, if you exchange the order, things are not going to work right. Problem 100 that you were asking is exactly the same type of uh, problem. It's just that a little bit of a flavor is given to it. It's talking about the water wave. No, the water wave that uh, we are, you might be talking about is not as fancy as the water wave that you see on the picture in problem 100. Sine and cosine function are applicable to small waves. Small waves, they are rather plain, not much of anything is happening. If the amplitude of the waves start to increase, things are going to become unstable. So you see on all of these Hawaii shows or the picture here that the wave is breaking on top of itself. That is a very complicated phenomena. So you see something happening like this. That's not sine or cosine function anymore. It's not even a function. Much more, more complicated physically and mathematically. So the picture is exciting, but it's really not applicable to the problem we are talking about. Problem is talking about y is equal to 3 sine of pi fourth of x plus pi fourth. Same questions are asked. What is the amplitude? What is the period? And what is the phase shift? So let's say again, this is not a sine word. It's not even a function because uh, of this wave breaking on top of itself. <coughs> okay, what's the amplitude of this function? Three. What's the period of it? What do we have to do? Two pi divided by the multiple of b. What is two pi divided by pi over four? Okay, let me write it better here. Two pi divided by pi over four. How do you divide? 
multiply by the reciprocal. What cancellation do you get? Price cancel, you just get an 8. So period of this thing is 8. When this multiple has a pi in it, it makes sense that uh, your x-axis to be labeled in ordinary numbers like 1, 2, 3 and so on as opposed to going like in this case multiple is just 1 you go 0 pi over 2 pi and so on if you have a multiple of pi here nice thing is that your x-axis is just going to be ordinary numbers ordinary whole numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on so what this means is that every 8 units the picture is going to repeat itself. What is the phase shift? Make sure you give me uh, the answer with the correct sign applicable. Remember what the phase shift was. C over B. But what was the C? C was a number that was subtracted here. Okay, well, it's not subtracted here. How do you do it then? So you force it. You say 3 sine of pi fourth of x, this is added, so it's a minus minus pi over 4. So in that formalism, if you want to force that formalism here, you have to force a subtraction. That means your c is minus pi over 4. And c was, excuse me, phase shift was c over b. What do I get? negative pi over 4 over pi over 4 and I get negative 1. What does negative 1 mean? What does negative mean? Left. So the way this is orchestrated here, if you move to the left, you have a red flag to indicate for you. If this is minus, you're going to the left the way you expect it. If it's positive, you go to the right. So, uh, it's not... Uh, not ask to graph it but suppose we ask you to graph this function what would you do important thing do your stretching first do your shifting later to avoid certain uh, certain mistakes especially with respect to horizontal motions so I have only one uh, we go ahead and draw our basic function the basic function is the sine sine goes so suppose this is y is equal to sine of x what do I have to do uh, stretch it by a factor of 3 so so far I have here I track some of the important points like the high point goes there don't confuse the stretching with uh, shifting it you are stretching it by a factor of 3. These guys stay put. So minus 1. So I go all the way up. I don't, I'm not shifting it. I'm stretching it. So this is y is equal to 3 sine of x. <coughs> well, The next motion, the amount of horizontal uh, shrinking or stretching is a little bit uh, hard to talk about because it's by a factor of pi over 4. Let's ask ourselves again, if this was a 2, if it was an ordinary number such as 2, what would happen to this uh, green or red picture? If it was a 2, it would shrink it. If it was a half, what would happen to it? Stretch it. Now this is a peculiar number. It's pi over 4. Is pi over 4 less than 1 or larger than 1? Less than 1. So what does it do to the picture? Stretch it. Now, stretch it by a factor of 4 over pi. That's kind of hard to visualize what we mean by that. It's better to go to the idea of a period. Period being 8 means this point instead of being at 2 pi which is 6.28 it's going to be where period is a location where everything repeats itself so 
if I had gone through uh, labeling this thing like one, two, three, four, five, six, this would have been 6.28. Where is my new location of hitting the x axis? When we say period is 8, what does that mean? means we are going to land back on the x-axis at the point 8. This uh, red or the blue curve are going to get stretched a little bit so that this crossing instead of being pi becomes 4. That crossing instead of 2 pi becomes 8. So where did this idea come from? Period is 8. It tells me how long to go before the picture repeats itself. So. I know now, instead of so by now I have y is equal to 3 times sine of pi 4 x the last motion to take place. What is our phase shift? Negative 1. Which way do I go? Oh. I go left. So instead of the function starting at 0, where does it start at? Negative 1. Instead of arriving at its maximum at 2, when is it going to arrive at its maximum? 1. Instead of crossing through at 4, where does it cross through? 3. So it starts from here, goes to the maximum. Instead of landing back at 8, where does it land back on the x-axis? So this becomes y is equal to 3 sine of pi 4x plus pi over 4. This was supposed to be a Okay. It does require uh, quite a few problems uh, to be solved by yourself for this to be understood. So make sure you practice these for the quiz on Wednesday and uh, after that we are going to start chapter 2 which is going to be new stuff so practice 1516 1516